Today I'm here with Claire Hart from the Tear Fund Ethical Fashion Guide, which came out this week. Yeah, Wednesday. Yeah, and response? Yeah, good, good response, great response from the public. We've had probably just over 5,000 people um, get their hands on one of the guides, which is great. Um, and then, yeah, mixed response, I guess, in the media a little bit. But you're always going to get that. Yeah, it, I mean, it can... It can challenge people, can't it? Yeah, yeah, and I think like our research is quite complicated and there's a lot that goes in behind those grades that you see in the guide. Um, but it, So I think if people take those grades at face value always, there can be some confusion. Um, but yes, we love it when people take the time to sort of read the full report and actually understand the depth of methodology that's gone in behind them. Yeah, oh, so I was looking at that and... Um, Cotton on getting an A and, and that um, kind of confused me a little yeah. bit. When I think of the cotton on brand, I think, how did they get an yeah. A? Yeah. yeah, I think what's important to remember with that is that our report is basically based on labour rights management systems. So what is the brand doing to look after workers in its supply chain? As opposed to looking at that sustainability piece at this stage. We did ask questions on environmental impact for the first time this year, um, but we didn't include that in the grade. So we're moving into that space more, but at the moment, that grade, Cotton On's A, is primarily what they're doing to combat worker exploitation. And in the case of Cotton On, they do heaps. You know, they've got a vertically integrated supply chain in lots of places, so they can take, they've got a lot of leverage over suppliers as well, so there is a lot in their power to improve the lives of workers, and they're taking that responsibility seriously. So that's kind of why you see them sitting up there in that A range. Right. The other... Um the other ones that got quite high, um, H and M B plus, Zara A minus, Kmart B plus. I can understand the Kmart B plus because yeah. after the Rana Plaza, yeah, um, tragedy, they went through and reassessed all their supply chains. Yeah. So um, that I understand, but things like Zara and H and M, when you know. Um, just the sheer scale of their production, yeah. and you hear that H and M has got billions of dollars with the product mm. that they've produced, and it's going to go to waste. Yeah, you know that that pull on resources that's just going to get basically dumped. Yeah, totally. And I, you know, I couldn't agree more. And that's why we're starting to introduce questions into our survey about environmental impact because. You know, it, we're looking after workers is one side of being ethical and, and sustainable, but, you know, looking at and assessing your impact on the planet and trying to reduce that is a whole other piece. And, you know, historically for the past five years, we haven't looked at that. We've focused on worker rights. Um, but, yeah, we're going to be looking at that in the future, and it's going to be very interesting to see what impact it has on those brands like H&M and Zara who produce high volumes of low-quality clothing. So, yeah. I'll be interested to see the results, just like you, I'm sure. Yeah, because that, that mass production, and then you hear about the average Zara garment's only worn six times, yeah. shipped around the world, worn a couple of times, seen it ends up in a clothing bin, and then it gets dumped into yeah. developing nations, yeah. and you know that's got its own social and environmental oh. impacts. There's a dog in the office. <laughs> <laughs> Oscar's in today. Um, so, uh, New Zealand, specifically New Zealand brands, yep. no surpri surprise that um, Koto got a name. Yeah. Yep. Um, Trillis Cooper and Eve. Yes. Why? <laughs> so, Trillis Cooper and a number of other brands actually chose not to engage in our research. And when a brand doesn't engage, we go ahead and assess them on information that's available in the public space. When we do that, there's a number of brands that can still achieve good grades. Like some of the biggest brands, like Levi's, they don't want to engage in our research, but they still get really high grades. Levi got a B minus based on publicly available information. Um, but in the case of Troy Scooper and a couple of other brands in New Zealand, they didn't have any information available publicly. And so that's where they get that low grade because there's no way for us to tell what that company is doing and whether they're taking adequate steps to protect workers. If they won't disclose anything, we've got no information, basically. 
And I think we live in an age where consumers want to know information, and we need to know where our pro- where products we consume are coming from. And so I think the industry standard has really changed in that respect. And what you, when you see that F grade, you're seeing a company that, in my view, is sort of behind the industry trends. Mm. So they don't have a sustainability statement or anything that you can refer to here. Mm. That in this day and age, you'd expect... At least three. Absolutely. And I mean, if you, I mean, I haven't looked at the websites of our companies that got low grades in the last couple of months because our research wraps up in early in the year. Yeah. Something might be up there now in response yeah. to this. Who knows? But at the time of assessment, there was nothing we could use, which is disappointing. We don't want to see any brands in that position. But I guess ultimately, you know, someone has to hold brands to account because there is. When there's no accountability, there can be huge human rights violations, and that's absolutely something that Tefan won't accept. Mm. Yeah, back to transparency. So from a purchaser, you have no idea. Yeah. And yeah. you can't find it even if you go looking. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Um, so who did really well this year of, of the New Zealand brands? So Icebreaker did really well this year, um, as well as two sort of smaller brands, Freeset and Common Good. So those, out of the whole research, which was 114 companies, um, three Kiwi brands were in the top five, which is great. Wow. And those, those yeah. three, Common Good, Free Set, and Icebreaker. It's really good to see. There's no surprises in terms of um, Common Good and Free Set because they're niche ethical brands whose entire business model is built off empowering their workers. But it's great also to see a more mainstream brands like Icebreaker, you know, hit that A-plus level because... You know, to have an A-plus, you have to know your supply chain, you know, from farm all the way through to shop and be able to report extensively on it, which Icebreaker can do, and that's great. Because they didn't get the same rating last year, did they? No, they didn't. So last year, they chose not to engage in the research, um, and similar to what I just said, there wasn't a huge amount of information available, which I think was a surprise to everybody, probably including them. Um, but, you know, they sort of, I guess, turned that negative experience around into something really positive because all of the information that we assessed them on this year to get them that A plus is included in their transparency report. Um, so that's very impressive. They have a very high standard of transparency to the public. That's brilliant. Mm. That's really that's great. They really are like world leaders in transparency, great. which is world leaders from New Zealand. Yeah. <laughs> um uh, Karen Walker C. Yeah. Yeah, again, lots of questions around that, and that's another one of the nuances of the research, which is interesting to understand. So Karen Walker got a B-plus last year when she participated. So when a company participates, basically that means they fill out a survey, but they can they also send us truckloads of information that's confidential, so audit reports and a whole bunch of other things that we use to verify what they're telling us. And Karen Walker chose not to do that this year. So so she's gone from a B plus to a C. But it's important to understand that that doesn't mean that anything has changed in her in her company. What it means is that our oversight over the processes has decreased. So we've worked with Karen Walker um, over this year on, on what they should disclose publicly. And that's why she gets a C, not an F, because they have done a lot of work on um, increasing the information that's available on their website. Um, and that's really good to see, because to get a C grade and to be non-responsive is really good, actually. Um, both Karen Walker and the Warehouse get that in New Zealand companies, and that's the highest rated non-responsive companies out of the New Zealand companies. Mm-hmm. So it's really good. And I mean, look, I think from my perspective, if a company chooses not to engage with us, but they still have a commitment to informing consumers about what they're doing in their supply chain, it's the same outcome. You know, we don't force companies to participate as long as we're still reaching the outcome of consumers being informed. Mm. Well, that, that's a primary goal, isn't it? Yeah. So when someone's going to the store, they can yeah. make that selection on who's got the, the yeah. better worker rights. And, and, and then you can, you've got that power of the purse, don't you? Yeah. Yeah, because, I mean, look, like, companies listen to consumers. Like, we have so much power, and I think we underestimate it vastly. You know, if we stop shopping at places or if we sort of do the opposite and all shop at the good places, that sends messages strongly. But I think that... Um, 
for so long, all that brands have heard from consumers is that price is the most important thing to them. Um, but so now we're asking consumers to send different messages to brands. So in our guides, you can get like a hard copy of Ethical Fashion Guide, and in it there's actually tear-up postcards that you can send to companies. One says, congratulations for doing well, because obviously it's so important to affirm the efforts that companies are doing. And the other one um, asks them to publish supplier lists if they haven't, so encourage that deeper transparency. Um, yeah. Great. Yeah. Um, I mean, so I've got on my phone. I've got the Good on You app yes. that uses. I think it uses yeah. your data. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Data. And I love it because mm-hmm. you can just scroll through, and it's at your fingertips, and you've got the rating. Yeah, and, and you can make a selection. Yeah, it's great. Yeah. I've got yeah. it too. And you can and it, similar to your postcard, you can ask the yeah. brands a question. Yeah, that's great. Yeah, any of those sort of. Um, Things that enable us to interact more with brands and send messages is so good. Yeah. yeah. Brilliant. And it's and it's spreading that knowledge across multiple platforms. Yeah. And then this becomes um, it becomes a new norm, yes. doesn't it? Yeah, and I think like I think someone said it at Fashion Statement last night, like what we need is for I guess the balance to tip. Right, so that there's more people who are buying like ethical, sustainable clothes than who aren't, and that sort of also enables that to become more accessible for everyone. At the same time, you know, it's like a it's like a both end. Yeah. So do you have a break now? What happens till next year? <laughs> um, so I will get a break actually for the next like month or so from this, but then every year we um, improve our survey. So things move fast in the industry. You know, the, the, the industry standard is always being raised, and so we redevelop our survey every year, and then we send that out to brands in August and September. So right from then is when I start to sort of do the to and fro back and forth between the different brands um, with their submissions and then back into the data analysis and whatnot. So it's a pretty quick cycle, it feels like. Yeah. Between that and publishing in April. Yeah. That's a lot of work. Yeah, it's pretty much an all year round thing. Yeah. So next year, is it going to be... So when I look at it, because uh, we've got a strong focus on... Um, environmental yes. impacts, yeah. is there going to be more of that coming yeah. through? Yeah, so we assess on four themes at the moment, all to do with um, worker exploitation or labour rights management. There'll be a fifth one next year, which will be environmental management. Great. Yeah. And that's where all the, that scaling, like the, the um, resource use. Yeah. All of that will start, well, and so that will impact like the H and M's and the Zara ratings. You imagine? I mean, it's hard yeah, to I mean, anticipate. It's it, it is hard to anticipate, and it sort of depends. So, like when we when we first introduce those questions about environmental management, they're going to be broad, high level questions, um, and then as we sort of assess with industries, that will sort of drill down in certain areas that we can see need attention. So it might take a number of a few more years for us to get a really good picture and for those questions to be developed to the point where we're gathering like the robust data that you, you know you'd be really interested in. Um, but I think over the next few years you will start to see impacts on grades of companies that have those high volumes of low quality clothing. Mm. And you can't really disconnect the environmental from the social. So, yeah. I mean, you know, we have up until this point in our report, you know, we've so solely focused on the social but we do recognise that that's only part of the picture. And so it is important to, you know, look at it as a whole. And you're right, when you do look at it as a whole, you can't separate the environment from the social aspect. But I guess you need to start somewhere and your focus was on... Because it came out in Rana Plaza yeah. Yeah. catastrophe, didn't it? And yeah. so that was... Um, so your starting point was completely on yeah. the workers, the social rights of workers. And Absolutely, yeah. yeah. And it's just growing from there. Interesting. Well, we love it. It's really exciting when it comes out. Go through it. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but um, yeah, no, interesting. Mm. And I hope that Trulice Cooper participates next year because um, we love your clothes, and yeah. um, and, and it would be not knowing is not knowing. Mm. And you want to be able to, but when you do spend your money, yeah. you want to know that. 
where it's, you know, that someone's life is in a misery because of where you're spending your money. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Thank mm -hmm. you. Thanks.